Today we're going to build this modern plywood platform bed that features a ton of storage and a headboard where you can charge all of your devices while you sleep. Okay, so this is a really big build and in a lot of the shots it's going to look like I'm just randomly cutting plywood. So I'm going to do my best to use some drawings and animations throughout the process to help explain exactly what's going on. In total, for the bed, all of the drawer boxes, a platform, and a headboard, I'm going to be using five sheets of three quarter inch plywood, two sheets of half inch, and two sheets of quarter inch. And you could use any type that you'd like, but I'm going to be using Baltic birch. In these shots, all I've been doing is using a track saw and a circular saw to cut my sheets down into some smaller pieces that I'll be able to handle over on my table saw. So over at my table saw, I started by ripping six long pieces to one foot 10 inches wide. And initially here, I'm leaving them a little bit wider than they need to be, and then taking a second cut where I'm just removing a thin strip to bring them down to their finished widths. These pieces are going to become the top and bottoms for the three boxes that comprise this bed. And in reality, the next step would be to cut my side pieces that need to be the same width, but that's probably going to get a little bit confusing to watch, so instead I'm going to show it more by each piece getting sized rather than the actual order of operation, just for clarity's sake. So to finish off the tops and bottoms, the next step was to cut them to their finished lengths. And four of them are going to be 6 foot 8 inches long, and two of them are going to be 36 inches long. And actually, it might be helpful to go over the whole design in detail before we get any deeper. That way you'll have a better understanding of what I'm making. So at this point, we've cut six pieces that'll become our tops and bottoms. For one of our boxes, we're going to cut two side pieces and two vertical partitions. And in this box, we're going to have five drawers. On the opposite side, I'm going to make a box that has four cubbies with two sliding doors to cover them. And this is going to work better for our room, but you could certainly make drawers or doors on both sides depending on your situation. Between the two long boxes, there's going to be another box that has one big drawer for linens and things. And I'm going to construct that box a little bit differently so that the drawer front is overlaid on the sides rather than inset, which is going to make for a cleaner finished look. Another thing to note is that if you look at this box, normally you'd expect the grain to run like this, but I've made it run like this. The thinking was that the top isn't really going to be seen that much because of the mattress, so by rotating the grain of these pieces 90 degrees, you can get a much more continuous look around the entire bed. Anyhow, there's quite a bit more to do after this, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so let's work on that and talk about the other parts when we get there. Okay. So next I started cutting all of my side pieces and vertical partitions to size. Here I'm cutting them to their finished height, which is going to be 10 and a half inches. Four pieces I could set aside, those will be the sides for the two long boxes. Two pieces I needed to narrow by three quarters of an inch, and those will be for the footboard box. Two more pieces I needed to narrow by another half inch, those will be for the vertical partitions for the drawer box and three pieces I needed to narrow by another inch and a half, and those are going to be for the cubbies on the box with the doors. And here you can see all the pieces cut to size. Also, a quick little tip, whenever you're working on a project like this, try to label your similar pieces. It's really easy to get confused when you have 20 pieces that are all within an inch but are used for totally different parts of a project. So, save yourself the hassle. Alright, so at this point we have all of our pieces cut to size, but before we could put anything together, we need to cut some rabbits and dados. Or, I guess technically, grooves. So after marking out a line to accommodate a half inch back panel, I use my table saw to make rabbits along the backs of all of the side pieces. Next I held those pieces up to my tops and bottoms, and marked out where I need to cut a stopped rabbit. And to cut those, I'm going to use a palm router with a flat bottom bit. Next I needed to cut some grooves into the piece with the sliding doors, and these need to be a quarter inch wide. And again I used my router on my top and bottom piece because they needed to stop short of the edge, and my table saw for the side pieces, since they go all the way through. And I've gone over this in the past, but just to show it again, when you do sliding doors, you want to cut the grooves in the top a lot deeper than the bottom, that way you can lift your door up into place and insert or remove it. 
So whenever I'm doing a big glue up, I like to break it down into smaller assemblies whenever possible. It's just a lot less stressful that way. So here I'm using these woodpecker clamping squares to start by attaching the sides to the bottom piece. Then once those have set up for about 30 minutes, I can attach the top. Or if you had more, I guess you could do it all in one shot. But in any case, assembling the other larger boxes was pretty much the same deal, except that they each had vertical partitions to install as well. The next step was to start installing my drawer boxes. I'm going to be using some push to open hardware that requires a half inch of clearance on either side. So here I'm marking in a half inch from each side and measuring the gap and then writing it down. Now you could just measure the total opening and then subtract an inch, but I guess the good thing about doing it this way is I can actually use my marks to strike a line on my workpiece if needed, just to get that perfect fit. After that I used my circular saw to rough cut a piece of half inch plywood and then use my table saw to refine everything to the finished dimensions. And I guess there isn't really any point in talking about those dimensions here, because if you were to build this, it's highly unlikely that everything's going to be exactly the same. So I'll just say, again, in these situations, do your best to just keep everything organized, because you're probably going to end up with a lot of very similar, but slightly different pieces. In total, I had to assemble six drawer boxes, and I figured it might be fun to do a little compare and contrast using a few different tools that I have that are all made to hold pieces at 90 degrees while you screw them together. So here I have footage of me using the woodpecker squares, some Rockler 90 degree clamps, and the Craig corner clamps. And honestly, they're all pretty helpful for doing this and act as an extra set of hands. And probably what was most interesting is that since I'm recording this, I can see how long each clip was, and no matter what I used, the total assembly time was within a 30 second margin of error over the course of about 12 minutes. And that's working at a leisurely pace. In any case, once those were assembled, I could cut some quarter inch material for the bottoms, and then I used the drawers themselves to mark and cut them to finished size. Next I attached one side of my hardware to my drawer boxes, and then used a piece of scrap wood to fit in the other side of my hardware. And I guess I must have been in a testing mood, or hyper from coffee or something, because next I decided to test if I could jump higher off of two feet or one foot. Now these boxes should be plenty strong with just glue, but anytime I'm doing drawers, I like a little extra insurance policy to ensure that everything stays nice and square over time, so I'm going to cut in some dominoes on all of these pieces. I figure it's better to be safe than sorry, right? And speaking of being safe, simply safe. That's his video sponsor. But actually, in addition to that, I've been using Simply Safe for the past 8 months or so. And if you're not familiar with them, they offer really effective, reliable, and customizable home security systems, which are monitored by professionals 24-7 who can call you an emergency and send police help if needed. It's all really easy and intuitive to set up and use. I think a screwdriver was about as complex as it got for me, and most components actually just use double-sided tape to install. Now, obviously everybody's house is different, but I think it took me about two hours to set up, and that included filming it. Anyhow, you can tell that Simply Safe's taken the time to make their systems really nice. Things like how small and discreet their sensors are, or little touches like reminding you if you've left a door or window open. And on top of that, they offer really fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees. Plus, everything's equipped to work for worst case scenarios. So for example, if you were to lose power or Wi-Fi, or if your system was attacked, it's still gonna work. One of the newest additions that I've made to our system is the Simply Cam Video Doorbell. It literally arrived the day that I'm recording this. But I've been wanting a doorbell cam for a while, so I'm really excited to start using it. I think that even beyond the security aspect, it's just going to be a huge convenience thanks to features like two-way audio, which will allow us to communicate with visitors from our phones. So if you've been thinking about a home security system, or even if you have one that you think could be better, check out Simply Safe. Put a system together and see if it might be a better option for you. Just head over to simplysafe.com slash four eyes or better yet, click the link in the description. All right, thanks Simply Safe.
Here I'm rounding over all of the outside edges of my box. And this is just to mitigate potential shin bumping damage. I figure it'll still hurt, but it should stop it from cutting. And more importantly, it'll protect the edge of the plywood from chipping. Next I could cut and install my drawer faces. And here you can see the chunk of wood that I'll be getting them from. And I'm just going to pay a little extra attention in order to make the grain look more continuous. Although I might end up painting these, which will make this moot. To attach the faces, I used some 8th inch spacer blocks and hot glue to hold them in place temporarily, and then some screws from the inside to secure things permanently. And the only kind of tricky thing here was for the drawer front that'll be on the footboard box. I had to cut these two little recesses to allow for the push hardware to work. And if this is confusing, this animation should explain. So basically you could design this bed this way, but I thought it might look cleaner like this. But for the hardware to work, the drawer needs to spring in a few fractions of an inch before it pops back out. So basically it can't be a true overlay drawer with this type of hardware. Okay. The last thing we need to do to finish off our box was to insert some back panels. So here I'm cutting them to size using some half inch plywood, and then I'm going to lop off the corner of each back piece. And the reason that this is necessary is because this little roundover area on the stopped rabbits from earlier. So a cleaner alternative would be to square them up using a chisel, but honestly nobody's ever going to see this, and it's just quicker and easier to do it this way. The next thing that I needed to work on was a few platform pieces that the box will rest on. So what you see in this shot actually happened earlier in the build, because this is the sheet of plywood that I got my drawer fronts from as well. But in any case, after I had ripped off a sizable piece, I cut a few chunks to the lengths that my platform pieces needed to be. And then over at my table saw, I ripped each of those into several pieces that are 3 inches wide. And then to put them together, I just used glue and some nails. And what I'm going for here is a base that's inset from the front and sides about 4 inches. So I'm making two like you see in this shot, and one more for a footboard box. So at this point, all of the pieces that go under the mattress are finished, but there's still one big problem, which is this gaping hole. Now, I'm not going to be using a box spring, so I'm going to quickly build another platform piece to match the height of the other boxes, which is going to support the mattress. And this is going to be a really quick and easy build using 5 2x4s and some scrap plywood. So here I'm just cutting all of my pieces to length, and then I could start assembling. And I'm going to be doing this with a mixture of some pocket screws, as well as some, I guess, regular screws. And the only thing that isn't in the video here is the piece of plywood. But basically after I had built the platform, I covered the top in some scrap plywood to minimize the gaps and to even the height up. Okay, so the bed's officially done and now we can move on to the headboard. So for this I'm going to start by cross cutting a sheet to 7 feet 4 inches long. Then I can take this piece to the table saw and cut out a piece that's 3 foot 1 inches wide and then another two at four inches and one inches respectively. Or one inch. Don't know why I said inches. It's a long voiceover. Next I cut a little notch out of each of the vertical plywood pieces, and this will be to clear the baseboard moldings so that the bed can scooch all the way up against the wall.
Next, I made a few little pieces that'll hold some cables for charging our phones and our watches and that kind of stuff. And to do this, I used my X-Carve because I thought that I might want more of them down the road. So this way, if that time ever comes, I got the file and I can just run them real quick. But I recently made some very similar pieces by hand for the conference table that I built last month. So if you want to see that in detail, just go check out that video and I'll put a link to it. So I'm sure one of the main questions that I'm going to get about this piece is going to have to do with why I didn't put any finish on it. So it's probably best to address that here. Long story short, I'm going to be building a bunch of other pieces for our bedroom in the near future, and I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go with those yet. So basically there's a chance that I might want to paint some portions of this bed, either to match or possibly even to separate this piece from the others aesthetically. Truthfully. I guess I won't really know until I figured out those other pieces. And then at that point I can make a decision. But until then, I'll just sleep on it. Special thanks to Gavin Crenshaw, Kirk Danielson, Seth Morgan Cutter, Sergio Salgado, Hatan Badrig, Dante Carr, Hiram Valanciano, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. I can't tell you how much it means to me to have your support each and every month. But, well, it means a lot. So thank you, seriously, for everything. And if you want to support the show too, and pick up one of these sweet Four Eyes shirts, check out the Patreon link in the description and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. Alright, see you in the next one.